Well, the Aussie, he's good-natured. He's a, he's a fun guy. Uh, he's a loudmouth, like the Yanks. They get along with everybody. So he says, well, yeah, um, well, uh, yeah, no big deal, mate. Maybe I should uh, reduce my um, travel shit a little bit before we hit the border tomorrow. Before we hit Iran tomorrow. Iran tomorrow? Zato has grimaces. Well, the hippie gone native in Earthistan uh, suffers a spontaneous uh, anxiety attack, yeah, and she manically fingers through her Afghani waistcoat for some hashish. Yeah, let's uh, smooth over everything with another hubble bubble, but uh, to her amazement, what? her pockets are empty. Losing her coal, she panicked. Look, you got way too much shit, mate. We should, we could, we could trade that uh, uh, bush gear uh, for hashish in the bazaar. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, ain't you one skinny palm with heaps of good ideas, mate? Yeah. Um. Yeah. He assesses his travel gear. Mm -hmm. Essential, non-essential piles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Well, they do find a shop, a funky shop around the corner in the bazaar mm -hmm. that specializes in a bartering used Western clothes. We're talking blue jeans, you know. Blue jeans, oh, uh, yeah. Western shirts with collars, and uh, their prize uh, item are James Bond. Oh, oh, seven belt buckles, yeah. Those hip, horny, as you can get, sexually frustrated Afghan young men, huh? Yeah, they've seen a bootleg copy of uh, James Bond, huh? And hope. Well, one European shirt. Well, the uh, condition doesn't even really matter. Um, 10 grams of hashish. Mm hmm Blue jeans, 20 grams. Yeah. Uh, they do some, some horse trading, and, uh, they end up with 40 grams of pure Afghani black moist. It's not assassin, but, you know, it's Afghani. Um, so they place 40 grams of hash beside that stand-up pause hookah. That clay hookah with the tiny little circular mirrors in it. They love to decorate things with these little mirrors all over shirts, hookahs, you know, uh, snuff boxes. And, uh, well, the Aussie, he, he gets a little bit serious here. Look, mate, we got to smoke all this shit before we cross the border into Iran in the morning, huh? <laughs> then he breaks down in laughter. Uh, and uh, after a few hookahs, yeah, uh, well, the sadhu ass melts down. Profound homesickness again. So she has as her trip, like, uh, hey, mate, uh, well, what's the big hurry about splitting to Iran in the morning? Uh, uh, let's talk a little bit more about where Aussie's coming from. Uh, Australia. Well, it's, uh, they call themselves a continent. Uh, and it's just a big desert island out in the middle of nowhere where 50% of the whole population, they live right next to the coast, 90% within 50 kilometers of the coast. Just a few aborigines scattered around in the interior, like Alice Springs. Well, you're... Coming from Southeast Asia, you hit Australia. Where do you go from there? You want to keep going. Well, um, next stop, Antarctica. Well, you could have a few Steinleggers 
in New Zealand on the way, break up your trip because no, no partying down. What do you want to do? Adopt a penguin? So when an Australian does his or her coming of age journey, uh, they tend to go back to the womb. Head for old London. It can take them years. I mean, it's already taking Aussie eight months to get here. And, uh, well, how did he get here? Well, he's from the Alice, so he's got to get up to Darwin in the Northern Territory, fly over to Bali. Bali. Oh, yeah, that was, that blew his mind right there. Oh, so bad. So good. All those naked women with their breasts swaying. I mean, in the 60s, Bali was like Gauguin in Tahiti in the 1890s. The women, no woman wore tops, and, you know, there weren't any tourists, any tourists there. So, yeah, then over to Sumatra, well, Lake Toba, huh? One of the huge crater lake, and so gorgeous Lake Toba, huh? Krakatoa, I mean, come on, it doesn't even compare. And then up to, uh, you know, the Malay Peninsula and in Thailand. Uh, yeah, she, she, she takes a ferry from Suratani on the Thai panhandle to uh, that fun-loving, uh, sexy, uh, do-what-you-want-to-do, Koh Samui. And uh, she figured... Uh, or he figured that uh, he was going to go on a big uh, Thai bar girl sex spree. Well, he did that, you know, up to a point. <laughs> Till they pussy whipped him so bad. Yeah, the Thai, the Thai bar girls called his bluff. Uh, well, they they enjoyed it. I mean, he's so big and hairy. They and and behind his back. Uh, well. After they fucked him, what they love to do is, is, is pull up tufts of hair on his arms. They whispered to each other, have you ever seen such a hairy monkey? He was known as the big hairy monkey. And they had fun fucking him. He, just, he had to get out of there? Well, he went up to Luang Prabang to smoke some of that Buddha grass. Huh? Buddha marijuana? Oh, <laughs> the strongest in the world up in the Mekong there. And he went even further where you can only go by uh, uh, narrow little canoes with long-stemmed uh, tiny motors off the back. Yeah, he explored all the way up there. And then, you know, got over to, to uh, the Indian subcontinent up in Nepal. And uh, I got into those magic mushrooms up in the Lang Tang Valley. Yeah, the hippies found those. I uh, got all up in there. And look, he's athletic. And... Um, they don't play rugby uh, in Nepal. So he decided to do a major track. You know, took a funky little bus all the way to Pokhara. Got a sore on his ass on that, huh? no cushions. Uh, and did a 17-day track around Annapurna. It's called the Annapurna Circuit. The beautiful Lake Pokhara. Annapurna is one of the most beautiful mountains in the world, like Tarek Mar in the Chitral, like Mount Shasta in California. There's a few mountains that are just so exquisite, their profiles. Yeah, so Annapurna, 17 days. I mean, he had to go over, uh, you know, a uh, <laughs> 5,000 meter pass, and he carried all his own stuff. No porter? Yeah, guitar. Steel frame rucksack, yeah, no worries about that, huh? Well, he's he's telling stories too. He says, "Look, uh, they got blood sucking leeches up there in those uh, rainforests in the jungles, in the Himalayas. Yeah, all those leeches, oh man, uh, they're they're as bad as the blood flies back in the Alice." I mean, you might wonder, you might have seen uh, pictures of Australians with little little corks hanging from strings along the brims of their hat. Well, we do that. So in the Alice, we shake our head all the time. 
to keep the flies off our face. And he, he scrunches up his forehead on that, huh? So he can look intellectual. <laughs>